Welcome to the Moms Making Six Figures podcast, where it's all about real women, real stories, real inspiration. And now your host and creator of Moms Making Six Figures, Heidi Bartolotta. My guest today, Brenda Lee, and will you tell us what your official title is? Yeah, yeah, emotional intelligence expert, and you know that can uh, people take that a lot of different ways. But basically, I've had varied. Um, I've been in various industries with this, with this training from divorce resilience to corporate training, and it really boils down. It all comes down to emotional intelligence of each human and how you interact with others and how that creates and develops amazing teams. And mm-hmm. yeah. So you have a very unique profession, yeah. I would say, and you do a lot of coaching yeah. is the way that I would describe it, sure. right? Yeah. So let's talk about how you got there because yeah. we have a lot of listeners that are um, younger women, maybe even just women that are aspiring to that six-figure place. Yeah. And then others that would be our peer group where they're listening to this because it's you know the women that they connect with. So- Let's talk about how you got to where you are. Yeah. 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 Well, honestly, I I was in a 14-year horrific marriage. (laughs) So uh, seven years in, my ex-husband had an addiction that I knew at that point, like I said, at seven years in, I was like, this guy is not going to shift. And so that began my obsession on uh, what makes people tick, what causes some people to be able to walk away from an addiction and some people can't, what causes, you know, like, like, how do people respond to each other, human behavior and the way that we interact with each other. So I started studying with multiple different therapists, neuroscientists, chiropractors who do, I mean, everything from conventional to unconventional, uh, trying to discover and figure out, like I said, what makes people tick. So that's been well over a decade ago but that that journey began. And, you know, when you go through a painful divorce and a, and a painful marriage that you're you're hoping someone can change, and when you realize it really doesn't have anything to do with them, uh, it's all about us. And when we are rock solid in who we were created to be, that's when we get to live our authentic life. So I've unpacked that code, if you will, and, and the average time it takes people to get over divorce is seven years, and it's just not... It's not necessary. It's not necessary. So I created a system that that can get expedite that process for them and get them to their true identity, essentially. So how, when you were developing the course, did you start out with just a couple of people? Like, how did it progress? Yeah, well, it didn't. So I was a, I was a general contractor and I was I didn't love it and I kept debating like okay what 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 should I do like I I wanted to be on purpose I wanted my life to have purpose and building houses was great and it was for the affordable housing unit so there was purpose there but not not fulfilling enough for what I was created to do and what my life experience had given me at that point I had owned multiple different businesses been in corporate and now I have this emotional intelligence aspect so <clears throat> Uh, I I burned the ships, Heidi. <laughs> I was uh, I, I was slated to build multiple houses. I called my developer up one day, and when I realized three different people in the course of one month that were close to me said, "You have to go. You have to go coach people on this." So I burned the ships. I called him up and I said, "Hey, can you find someone else to build all these duplexes?" And he said, "Yes." And I said, "Peace." And I was in the very next day. <laughs> so it was. I, I'm a when, when I've made a decision like that, I. I I'm not going to wait around for three or four months and, you know, mm-hmm. sit on my laurels. So, yeah, I I just made it happen. So what was that like? Because there's probably a lot of people listening that are thinking, yeah. what? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Right. And again, I hear this a lot with women that I interview. You went from something that you were very good at very good at. Yeah. And you completely transitioned. Yeah. And you did it like that. Yeah. Most people maybe takes a little bit more time. So yeah. so talk about that. It was terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'll be honest. I, I I'm I, at this point I'm a single mom of four kids. So I've been divorced, moved to a different city. You know what I mean? For all intents and purposes, I knew nobody in Boise. And so it was terrifying. But it, th- this is when the rubber meets the road on being authentic to who we are. Mm-hmm. And that it, once I had a taste of this, oh my gosh, like this is absolutely what I have to do. You can't not do, you can't unknow something, you know? You, ha- you I had to step in it and I had to do it. So, it, it, and it's still terrifying. I mean, some days I wake up and I'm like, 
what have I done in the last three years? You know what I mean? Like, I can't believe I did this. And, and there's still just that kind of, you know, being, like I said, a single mom. And you get that where mm-hmm. you're now caring for these. And I have four boys. So they're all on me. And um, yeah, yeah. But it just, when you're on when you're on purpose and, and you're passionate about it, it, I don't know, it just, I wouldn't change it for anything. I was going to say you come alive in it, though. Oh, yeah. Oh, totally. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep, for sure. Yeah. It's my lifeblood. And you've pulled that now um, also into working with yeah. corporations. Yeah. Yeah. It's really fun. It's been really cool. I mean, uh, doing divorce people it is great, right? Like, I love it. And they really need the help. But the challenge with them, they're depressed. And, you know, nothing affects their life like divorce does. <clears throat> Every every area of your life is is impacted. So the deal with corporate is instead of doing one on one with people, you know, working through them well over the course of eight or twelve weeks, whatever. Uh, with corporate, you can have twenty three people in a room, and I'll do two and three day retreats with these companies, and up to fifty people, you know, like whatever, depend on the number. And and, and I'm a very interactive uh, trainer. We're not no, you're not sitting here yawning and asleep in two hours because I'm just talking at you. We're solving problems. We're doing stuff and. And when you walk in the next morning on those events and they're like, you won't believe the conversation I had with my wife last night, right? It's radically changed our relationship. And that level of impact is is really fun. It's been really cool. Yeah. yeah some of the fun. stories that you have told me yeah. and those are just yeah. amazing. Yeah. And it's that shift. You really help people to make that shift. Yeah. 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 A radical shift can happen, right? Like when, uh, typically it's just awareness. When people understand what they're doing, what they're, how, the lens of which they're looking through, mm-hmm. just that alone, people shift very quickly. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> so I ask all of my guests this. Yeah. Do you, and I think this is going to be an interesting one hearing it from you. So <laughs> do you remember when you achieved six figures? Oh. And mentally, how did that impact you? Yeah. So, so that was something that happened before, right? It wasn't necessarily, I mean, you know, whatever it was, but the very first time was, um, ah, it gets me, it's like you arrived, Mm -hmm. you did it right. Like it's the thing that you finally got to do that you were probably told you never could do, Mm -hmm. you know, and especially as women, it's hard. And it's a, it's even in the general contracting world, it's a dog eat dog world. And you're fighting for your space as a woman. And so oftentimes people try to tear you down, the crabs in the pot, right? And family, family will, friends, family, you know, everybody, things shift when you get to that space. But um, but when you rise up and you have tenacity and perseverance and you can stand and look at yourself in the mirror and just say, holy crap, this has happened, mm-hmm. right? It's It's an incredible feeling. Maybe just because of the way that you look at the world, talk a little bit about that for those that are not there, because we do have yeah. a significant part of our listeners that are aspiring to yeah. six figures. Yeah, good and, for them. And I see this okay. a lot, and I know that you would probably phrase it in a different way, but I watch people hold themselves back. Oh, oh my gosh. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> I I do. Okay, so I'll give you the story of uh, where I'm in a room full of uh, corporate business owners. Well, I shouldn't say corporate business owners. They were business owners. They all owned their own business. And these are anywhere from the, there was one gal in the room that wasn't quite to a million yet. Okay. But there was 22 million, 66 million on the one gal. And the gal that was wanting to aspire to the million, she's like, I just don't. I just don't know what's holding me back. I'm afraid. I'm afraid to spend this money on employees that I know is going to free me up to make the money that I need to to make. And, you know, like all those shifts that we have to make as we grow, where it's scary to not have it be your own. Now you're responsible for payroll and all that kind of stuff. And, And I just said, I said, hold it, right? I was like, everybody stop right here. Doug do you ever feel like an imposter? Like, like you can't quite get there. And he's like every stinking day. And that dude's taken his multi-million dollar company to a billion dollar company. That's his goal, right? Teresa, have you ever felt like an imposter? And she's like every day before I walk into work, right? So everybody who has a goal feels like an imposter. Every human on the planet is an imposter. Therefore, this imposter syndrome, we hold ourselves back over this imposter syndrome and it's not real. It's not real. We really are limitless. When we step into our essence and step into our power and just believe in ourselves, then anything's possible. And and that's the biggest that's the biggest hurdle is people, you know, we talked about the conditional gap, the social conditioning, parental conditioning, religious conditioning and school conditioning. That's that voice at 2 a.m. that wakes you up and says, "You can't do this. Who do you think you are?" Right? 
And when you learn to understand that that's not you, that's not your voice, that's not what you were created for, you can get past that and you just have to have belief in yourself. It's really, I mean, it's a process, but it's also stupid simple, right? Mm -hmm. Make a decision that you can be successful and things start to follow. I'll tell you, so what you just made me think of, so as a mom, you'll appreciate this. I'm in the car the other day with my two daughters, right? And my younger daughter is definitely at that place where she's struggling a little bit more with her identity. And she's never, she's always been the younger sister. So she, I think she looks at my older daughter like she's like perfect or something. Always had great grades and all this. And Katie looked back at her and she's like, I don't know what's wrong with you. You just decide that that's what you are. Yeah. You yep. just decide. And she's like, I hate you right now. Oh. And she's like, oh. I know because you won't just decide. Right. You just decide that that's what you are. And it, the the simpleness of the conversation was so precious. It's true. Yeah. We muddle it so much. And, and we muddle that because, uh, you know, like a... 95% of our of our operations of our brain are our subconscious. That's that belief structure, the conditional gap that I talk about, all that conditioning. That's where all that comes from. So we've got 95% that we're combating. 70 to 80% of our thoughts are negative every single day, depending on the study that you look at. 95% of those thoughts are on repeat. So unless we manage that and decide to be what we're going to be, that negativity will take over. Mm-hmm. It will. We'll, we can become victim to it, but... That's where our strength, we have to stand up and say, that's not you. That's not what I was created for. I'm doing it. So what am I not asking you? What would you want to convey that I'm not asking you? I know you, I feel like we could do a dozen of these. Yeah, we totally could. Pull out your inference. So all of that knowledge, but give me one or two points maybe that I'm not asking that you think would be beneficial. Yeah. You know, um, I mean, mean, we touched on it, but, but belief is a huge thing and, and silencing that voice that everybody, like I said, I call it the 2am voice. It never wakes you up to tell you you rocked it in that boardroom today. Right. Never, ever does it tell you that. And, and to get really ambitious with goals. That's one thing that people write them down, believe them. One thing I, one thing I would love to address with people, there's a misnomer about visualization or vision boards, right? Everybody's like, oh, we can put these up and surely it's going to happen. Not true. Our emotions are tied to everything. So unless people are grasping their goal and in, in feeling as if it's our, they, these women that are aspiring feel as if you got there. What is it going to feel like? Where are you standing? Who's in the room? Who's the first person you call? What do you smell? The more you can get all your senses involved, the more your our, our brain is a goal achieving machine. It will achieve whatever goal we set it, we, we, we set the target on, whether it's the negative goal or the positive goal. Where focus goes, energy flows. So the more we focus on the negative, the more they're going to go down that path. The more you focus on the positive, it just naturally cultivates. It's a goal achieving machine. It will do it. Only if you have emotions tied to it, though. So you have to, like, like I, I like to liken the vision board as a nightmare, right? You wake up in the middle of the night, your body doesn't know you're dreaming, but your palms are sweaty, you're breathing heavy, you're sitting up, you're intense, right? Mm-hmm. Your body is physiologically responded because the brain doesn't know the difference between what we think and reality. So the more we focus and tie that emotion, so the physiology and the brain is convinced then that you're a, you're a six-figure earner and it's done. And it happens mm-hmm. and it, and, and it takes, it takes time. I think that's the other thing for people to be patient. You know, we can get really discouraged and, and then that voice starts beating us down all over again. Mm-hmm. And the more we, fo- again, where focus goes, energy flows. So you focus on the positive, focus on what you're grateful for. And the more you stay in that direction, the faster it happens. That was awesome. I love that. Yeah. So book, podcast, is there one that you would recommend? Is there one that you recommend mm-hmm. to people on a regular basis? Yeah, yeah. The best book of the decade for me has been The Power of the Subconscious Mind. People, we don't understand. It's like an operating system. I, I like in our brain, you know, we're making decisions out of 5% of our frontal lobe conscious brain. But the reality is it's all driven by the 95 subconscious. So I liken it to like Microsoft Word. We pop on, there's a little icon, we click on it, it comes up, we choose a template and blah, 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 away we're going, right? That's five, all that computer coding, those nerds that do all that crap in the background, that's what's happening in our brain. And it won't pop up and function on Microsoft Word if all that stuff isn't there. Mm -hmm. So the power of the subconscious mind, you get into that operating system of your brain and we really have no idea our capability until we reevaluate this and reprogram. 
rewire. My, my degree is in computer coding, and I often giggle because I'm like, oh, I guess the only reason I got that is so I can recode people's brains, <laughs> the neural pathways in the subconscious. So that's awesome. Yeah. We have to do this again. So. We have to do it yeah. again. Yeah. I'd love we it. We have to do some more in depth things, I think, yeah. with you. It'd be really fun. Yeah. 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 I'd love to do like training, you know, whatever. There's a, I've got a belief, a belief cycle process mm -hmm. that when people get that, they're like, holy crap, it just blows their mind. And that's the first step to, sh to shifting, you know, people, yeah. people taking their power back over these emotions. Yeah. We give our power up to negativity. Change. Yeah. 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 Thank you for taking the time to do this. Yeah. I really, really appreciate it. Thank you so it. much for having me. Yeah. I feel honored to be here with you. Yeah. Thank you. This was great. Yeah, it was. <laughs> it always is. We always have good conversation. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for listening to the Moms Making Six Figures podcast. If you enjoyed this podcast, please take a moment and leave a review on iTunes. To learn more about Moms Making Six Figures, head over to MomsMakingSixFigures.com. That's right, MomsMakingSixFigures.com.